Thank you. will bless each other. Have a peace in your heart. You are the one who will save the world and you will take the land that I promised. We have the ICE uh, HANA mission conference today. We did a seventh mission conference last year online. Because of the COVID-19, we couldn't have the missionaries from other countries. We thought it would be the last, first and the last of this conference online. But we did, we are doing this again this year online. Through this internet, we have eight different countries here. In the afternoon, then all who will appoint all the very important missionaries. On my right hand side, we have a missionary, Hong Myung-shin, and his family members. And on my left hand side, And uh, the missionaries will be appointed today from Laos and we have the pastors and his family members and the lay leaders and elders from Laos. We welcome all of them. We're going forward to uh, going forward to the Lords uh, from different parts of the world, but there is a sure thing. Even we cannot get it together, still the transcending power of God is coming upon all of us. If we have this service through online, but the tremendous um, grace and work of God will come upon all of us today. Even though we have this disastrous pandemic, COVID-19, but nobody can stop the tremendous blessings of the Lord. All the missionaries attending this conference will gain the tremendous stress from the Lord. And spirits and Mr. the lay leader, will receive the tremendous blessings from the Lord as well. When you receive the power of God in your field that you are involved, then the working of the Lord will happen. We will have this starting point of this um, tremendous work of the Lord with this HANA mission conference today. Today's targets are we are one person who saves two, three, seven nations. We will save two, three, seven nations as one person. There are three uh, parts in the Bible that we can't understand. The one thing, the first, is that God's people were under captivity and become sla becoming slaves. In the era of Joseph, because of his brothers, he was sold as a slave. But in Egypt, he was treated well and was respected by these Egyptian people. 
even because of Joseph, the uh, family members went into the, the nation Egypt, and they were respected, and they were uh, people were very uh, jealous about these people because they were well treated because of Joseph. And he asked the Pharaoh to give the land uh, to his family members, and he, the, the king Pharaoh gave the, the best land to them. And Jacob living in Gosen, and he died. And because of the, for the funeral, he asked Pharaoh, in Genesis chapter 57, and he, uh, he invited, he asked, he requested all the elders of the nations to attend this funeral. Up to this point, uh, the Joseph family were the, the subject that people were respecting. But after Joseph died, the, everything completely changed. And they started to become a, um, the enemies of that nation. And they became slaves again. And some time later, when it was the time that David was king, and the Israel people received all the praises and respect from all different nations, and they were the one who saved all the nations. Then these people were destroyed by the nation named Syria. And they were and the most of very um, the biggest position, the highest position, but they just completely cha changed and become became slaves, and they were under captivity. And they just the the, the king was had his eyes gouged, and he was chained, and he was dragged. Why does this, this these things happen? And 70 years later, after becoming slaves, they came, they returned, and descendants of David, and there was a Zerubbabel, and he started rebuilding the temple. And he rebuilt Israel. But in 22, 200 years, they became the slaves of Hela and Rome. And it's not a kind of simple story in history. As a, as a child of God, before the worldly people and non-Christians, they could become a slaves and captive. We and our descendants might have these destructions as well. That's why we have this, uh, we might see the churches crumbling and destroyed and temples just are destroying and we may see this um, the glory of God fallen the, onto the ground then what will God do for us God made us in his image he will not let his people destroyed by all these other nations and enemies of course not. He will absolutely give the answer and will save us. And it will let us conquer the world and win over the nation. In one word, that is the gospelization of the three seven nations. That is God's absolute plan. 
within the mission of two, three, seven nations. There is God's passion and God's plan. For this, He saved us first. He healed us first, and He blessed us. Because of what? For two, three, seven nation gospelization. From the beginning, God had this mission to three, seven nation gospelization. And at Genesis chapter 120, and blessed them, and God said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the land. Then they will re renew this gospel in the era of Aram. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, especially 3. Then I will bless the nation because of you, through you. And when the Aram was there, then if the, the, the nation was discarded, then Jesus said the last. It said that you go to the nation and make disciples all over the nations. Why did he say this? Because all the nations are the place that is discarded and emptied. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, 28, verse 20, and go out the nations, and then you must save the, all the nations because all these places are emptied. And in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that you must go out and you must witness it of my covenants. Because all the nations are discarded and you must be witnesses in that all nations. From the beginning, God just put His passion, His plan for the discarded nations and the empty places for us to be witness of God. Whoever believes in this covenant, they, they just enjoy the blessing of the Lord. That was the uh, seven remnants, and they were the, the people of belief. But when he said this first, then the people do not understand this. Of course, for us, when we are talking about discarded nations, then you might say that it's not. It's not. It's none of my business, and I'm not related to this. Then, then you are not in the flow of the covenant. You, your business must be aligned to two, three, seven nation gospelization, and all the remnants are attending this conference and the, and their denomination uh, in their department. They cannot get into this hall, and they have their separate room to attend this remnant conference online. Remnant. You must remember this, your study. Your studies must be aligned to 237 Nation Gospelizations because the first passion of the God of the Lord was, uh, was focusing on this discarded nations. Nobody can stop his passion. Then if you are not, you have nothing to do with this, then you must change yourself. At this point, then how can we save the people and the nations all around the world? And how can we save the 500, 5,000 people around there, out there and save the people? There is one way to go to uh, the 500 drivers. And we can do this through the, the blessing of the throne. We are having this conference with different part of eight countries through through the internet. And we started having this. Uh, we have the prayers from different part of the nations, from Taiwan and from Philippines, and the people. Philippines are attending. Philippines are attending this conference through the internet. They are attending this conference 
and where they are, and they are receiving the answers from where they are, and we are receiving answers here, and the Philippines in the Philippines receiving the answers from the Lord, and in Laos, and they are receiving answers in that place, and this C nation will receive the answers as well. That will be. A, Uh, driven to the throne of the Lord. Of course, we are in different parts. When we pray where we are, then where we are, then we will receive the blessings of the throne from above. And the revolution, the book of Revelation, that they will receive the answers from uh, the, uh, from the angel, from the angel's hand. That will the the the, the opening the heaven and the earth will happen. In other words, this tremendous mission will be happening through the transcend um, overcoming the place and time. And the power of the throne of God. Will go to the place which were discarded and empty. When we are talking about this place which were discarded, then what are the places? Uh, it's not about the people. Uh, there are few people. That is the place where people do not have the gospel at all. Because there are sufferings and problems without any answers, these are the places where we call it discarded places. There is no answer, and they were under this captivity of darknesses, and they are falling into death. The real problem is that nobody can give them the answer. In discarded places, with this full of darknesses, no, nobody is the missionary who will give the answer. And we saw this video. And the 30, 32 million people have never received the gospel and heard of the gospel. And the, these are the people that never have, have never received the gospel and heard the gospel. And we saw this uh, in the video. And so there is a 4 million people going out there as missionaries. But The only 30% of the population received the answers, I mean, the gospel. If you receive the answers from the Lord, then the God will work on you. Where is God's passion? In, in two, three, seven nations, discarded and empty. Israel people were under captivity for 400 years. There is no hope at all. If they give a birth to a child, then they will become slaves again, and they will become slave, slaves again and again. That is the, there is no hope there. Uh, there. But there is one person who received the gospel, Moses, and That everything completely changed through this one person. And so, only j o g e b e t knew the reason why they, she had spread the gospel, then she went into the palace. God raised uh, one man named Moses and spreading the gospel. That he is alive through all the nations. We can see this in the Bible. In the book of 
the Bible, we didn't read it, but Acts chapter 4, that there is a place called Samaria. This city has never heard of this gospel for 700 and 800 years, and they, they were suffering from all these um, the darknesses and the sufferings. And that was the place where people uh, can see that this guarded uh, city, then God sent to Philip there. And through this one person, they changed, com changed this place completely. Acts chapter 8, 28 to 40, there's one man, eunuch, and he is uh, in a high position and taking care of the treasures of the queen, and he went to Jerusalem to re uh, receive the answers, and he couldn't receive the answers in Jerusalem. Even he, re he read this, he was reading uh, this gospel, he couldn't get the answer, but through the Holy Spirit, God sent one man filled to them, to him. And filled that it was the, the empty place and it was a discarded nation and God sent this one person to eunuch. And the Ethiopian eunuch received the gospel and was baptized. And I went to Ethiopia. They were very proud of the gospel. What for about what? At chapter eight, and they were in this book of the Bible. At chapter like chapter eight, they were the nation uh, which received the gospel for the first time. But what about this now? They were discarded nation, even with a big high pride. They couldn't understand the gospel. And they, because of this pride, that they stopped themselves from hearing the gospel. And this place, God sent uh, the, the Holy Spirit to, for the, this, this Ethiopian eunuch to receive the answers. What, God, what they God really want, want there. God really wants work on us through the, the working of the Holy Spirit. You must have this interest and this passion to enjoy the gospel that God will open your eyes to see three things. God's passion is focusing on two, three, seven nations and discarded nations. How could we evangelize these empty places? How could we save the three, seven nations? How could we go to that nation? Because we have a different culture, different languages, and how can we go there? But there is one thing that if you put this passion of the Lord into your heart, then you will open your eyes to see this, and you can open the door. to do this. You must first see the place where uh, Jehovah's eyes stay. You must see the place where God is looking at. And you must see this, the, pl uh, the place where Jehovah's hidden answer. And you must see the eyes to open the eyes to see the miracles. where Jehovah's power takes place. First of all, where is the place that Jehovah's eyes stay? Especially discarded places, there is absolutely no gospel. That is the place where the Jehovah's eyes stay, where the Um, the, where the, the God sent the missionaries who had to have to look gospel. And missionaries might have the difficulties because they are in the better field, spiritual better field alone, but they have the absolute gospel. They have the, uh, this focusing eyes on them from the Lord. So there is no point losing the power and being discouraged.
if there is an absolute covenant with a missionary, with absolute covenant, there is a place where God's eyes stay. And you might say that that's not working well for me. People worrying about this step, that then you must check whether you are uh, um, walking and the flow of the covenant and grabbing hold of the covenant as well. If it's not the absolute covenant grabbing hold of something else, then you might have the, uh, the people with, without the absolute covenant. That's why they are uh, in the test because they receive, uh, they got all the scars from people. If you, as long as you have this absolute covenant, then you will have the meeting uh, with the absolute covenant. As long as you grab hold of the covenant, absolute covenant, and the ab- all things will be working on you within this absolute covenant. And through the meeting, then you must receive the answer. You must find the answers within this meeting with the absolute covenant. If you have this real absolute covenant, and you find the absolute covenant with the people within the absolute covenant, then God will show you the answer. So many things will happen from here and there. But as long as you are within the absolute covenant, that is also um, that is also happening within the permission of God. Think about Joseph from his ancestors grabbing hold of covenants. Joseph had this absolute covenant as well. Up to what? Even he could see the vision in his dream from his ancestor, Genesis chapter 3, and the descendants of a woman were, were We strike the uh, head of the enemy. Then he got received answers. And he's uh, in, in Joseph, on Joseph and his eyes, because the God's eyes was focusing on. Whenever he takes steps, he became a slave. He was sold as a slave, but it just happened for no reason. Uh, he went to jail, but just it happened. It didn't happen for no reason. He went to the prison where there is a, a degenerate in high position. It, it didn't happen by chance. There is an absolute plan, absolute passion of God with Joseph. As long as you grab hold of this absolute covenant, it will happen to you. If you are not with the absolute covenant, you are always suffering from all these problems happening in the church. But if you, as long as you have the great answers for absolute covenants, then there's nothing happening to you. Of course, there are good things and bad things happening to you. You are discouraged by bad things, and you are. Happy because with those these good things? No, it's not. You must think about these circumstances with absolute covenant. And Moses grabbed hold of this the covenant of the blood, and he just shared this covenant with Egyptians and Israel elders, and he talked to his people as well. Think about the answers beyond these actions of Moses. There was a woman who grappled up the absolute covenant. And in there, she just gave a birth to Samuel, who changed his covenantal blessings and of those people gathered in the Mark work upper rooms, they were the people with absolute covenant. They stake their lives at risk in gathering together. They might lose all these their positions, but they had the absolute covenant, so they gathered in the Mark upper rooms. 
But God's eyes stayed not in the Jerusalem, but in the mark of balloons with these people. Why is this? Because this is the gathering of the Absolute Covenant. All his eyes focus always on, on mine, on me, with the Absolute Covenant. No matter what kind of circumstance you are under, you, you grab all the covenants all the time that God will give you the blessings, the Absolute Blessings of meeting people. And everything, what is the absolute covenant? That is Christ and the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit. And it is an incomparable blessing that is the throne of God, that He will transcend time and place and will give the answers. And who He just gave the light shining all these two, three, seven nations. With the absolute covenant, God will focus on His eyes on Him. Second, where is the place where uh, the Jehovah's hidden answers gather? s There is a place that God's focus gathers. And the missionaries who is in the flow of the absolute covenant journey and with his helpers, And there is a place where God's focus always gathers. It's not always everywhere. That is the absolute journey that we, when you take with the absolute covenant. And the missionaries and the helpers and the elders who help these missionaries, and God will help all those for the absolute covenant. That is the most important covenant in the Bible. So the, the missionaries must grab hold of this part. They must grab hold of this absolute covenant going forward, and God will, uh, God will send very important elders and very important business people and very important disciples as well. And all the remnants for the future generations. And even God will let you find your health and your hidden economy. When, when Moses was taking his journey with absolute covenant, and you see this, and you see this very important elders, Lahab and Joshua, like a bear, as a very important disciples. then they could conquer the land of Canaan. They had a passion to stop this uh, vicious uh, culture of licit Palestine. And Hannah and Jesse also received this absolute land, absolute covenant. And through David, the era of David, And they just conquered the land of Palestine. Acts chapter 1:14, there is a mark of a loom. The people with absolute covenants, and they were taking this absolute journey going forward. Then they enjoyed the blessing of Pentecost, the best blessings of all. And all these disciples and the business people from different, 15 different nations got prepared. And they scattered, and while spreading the gospel, there was a time that they faced problems. And there was an Antioch church, and they faced a lot of troubles. But as long as they were in the absolute journey with the absolute plan and hidden answers, and they They just gathered in one place that God will focus every detail on them. And third, the last, when we go on a journey with absolute covenant, God will give us the miracles that takes place within His power. Where is the God's 
absolute miracle through through nameless. We must stake your lives at risk for this matter. That would give you this, and so we must prepare for the next future mission for the future generations, missionaries. Deuteronomy chapter six verse four, and God let people cross the Jordan River, and He crumbled Jer Jericho, and He stopped the uh, the sun and the stars. Even God is performing the miracles until now. So these people they conquered the land of Canaan. They were the generations were prepared. Within the God's covenant, Isaiah chapter eighty, verse one. Then you must shine the light. Arise, shine your light, and your children will come from different parts. And that is the uh, thing that God is giving us the message that the remnants will rise. Chapter twenty-two. The least one shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. So you must raise a remnant as a summit. You must raise a dis make disciples with a remnant. You must make a future missionaries with remnants. And the book of Acts seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Then there was Paul spreading the gospel. He is a missionary who absolutely see the absolute covenants from the Lord. Then Rome was conquered. What is what do you mean by this conquering the Rome? It's not about exploiting this nation. It's not about you are bullying around this nation. They just returned what they had possessed in the past. Uh, that is a conquering where the God really want us to be. So who is going to do accomplish in this conquering? The remnants. Next, the posterity. You must take your life for the next generations and next posterities and making these people for the future missionaries. Next generations will be the next missionaries, and the next pastors, and lay leaders, and the elders for this gospel. What is the mission of the mission? Of course, it's also important to go out there to make the disciples in that rear local places and to make disciples there. Of course, it's important to go out there, making disciples. The more important thing is that you must build up the system within the church to make the disciples for the next generation, for the next missionaries, our children, our elders, and must be the missionaries for the future, and so. Many multi-ethnic people coming to this church and all the TCKs. It's one of them. It's very important. The God just didn't simply just make this nation as prepares with uh, in the economy and make this nation richer. There is the absolute God's plan within this Korea. So you must make this absolute missionaries, these absolute disciples within this church. That is the the missionary missions for the future. So through these missionaries, we can build up the churches and our UTC, and you must pray on this. I must pray for the multi-ethnic people and the missionaries, the next generations, to be the missionaries the absolute, with the absolute covenant. 
Uh, and the field of missions, and they just put、um, take the Korean case as the the one of the successful mission field mission plan. And the missionaries came to Korea, and they just build up this mission school. And they just let us、um, work on our own, and they build up these his hospitals and schools. And the, the only missionaries from different nations, they were all in their chinese from England and from the United States, and they had a heart toward this Korea. And within they, when they were in their twenties, went to came to Korea and make all these the, tremendous things for the development of a mission. So it's time for us to do this. And. Uh, thankfully, these old the alumnus have this heart toward the mission, and、uh, that is the blessing of this church. If you have the、uh, the heart toward the missions and raising up the mis missionaries, and they have, we have also remnants who are having this heart to be the missionaries to scatter the gospel, and and we have、uh, the center in Nonggong. Uh, with the young young people, just went to Donggong and they just gathered the money, and opened this center to help this、uh, the people, the children in Donggong area. I don't think that's only the simple answers from the Lord. So you must have this. It's one of us. Everyone in this church received. And had his gospel toward, and then they just passed on this heart to the next generation, and they just that's why they did. And we had mish,、uh, the videos about this mission. If you lose hold of this, then you may see your next generation under captivity of the nations of other of the world. If you have this heart toward the mission, then then your mission. Um, next generation will be missionary of for the future, and other lay leaders with this with their skills that they will be、um, slaves of the gospel, saving the world. That is the only hope for this era. Oh, let's come to the conclusion. To to save the to save three seven nations, that is the only within the God's way. In other words, to save the three seven nations and discard the places that that's within God's plan. That's all the all church people must receive and enjoy these blessings from the Lord. We must enjoy this. We must receive this, cause God will accomplish this. We are not、uh, doing these tremendous things with our own power. We just must put ourselves aligned to God's plan. Then God will help help us heal others. God will bless only one person through me. Then we want to heal the all the nations and the all the areas. Think about the the remnants received historically. They receive this answer. All of them receive this answer. Of course, you have this, the material positions. But if you have no interest in these two, three, seven nations and this discarded place, and he has no point giving you the blessings, the material blessings as well. That you are, you will become the slave of the nation and of the world. Even though you are under the circumstances of the persecution, that's nothing. No problem, because you must go forward with this mission for two, three, seven nations, and through the the blessing of the throne, that transcend time and places, and your prayers with your prayers will pass. Down on to spread to two, three, seven nations and discarded places. 
then in the name of Jesus, we will experience this blessing of the mission. Father God, thank you. With your passion, we will go forward to discarded places. Please bless us for this heart. And your heart will be mine. And your conclusion will be mine. And your work will be mine as well. I pray in Jesus' holy, wonderful name. Amen.